In this video we're going to look at expectation. At this point in time we're only going to define what um, expectation or expected value is for a finite sample space. For a finite sample space remember we've got a finite number of elements in our sample space. We'll label them A1 through AN and the probability of each one of them we'll just call P sub I. And very simply the expected value E, we'll call it E, is just a summation of all of the values in our sample space times their individ individual probabilities and then all summed up. So we're just going to sum up A sub I times P sub I. Let's take a look at some examples. Again, we're going to start with a really simple example. We're going to roll a die one time. What is the expected value? So our sample space is finite and so it just is from you know our, our integers 1 to 6 and in this case they're all equally likely so they all have the probability of 1 sixth so what is the expected value? The expected value is just the, each individual value in our sample space times its probability all summed up so we've got 1 times its probability which is 1 sixth 2 times its probability which is 1 sixth plus, and we just keep on going down to, we get to the end, 6 times its probability of 1 6. Now we can pull out a 1 6 because they all have the same probability. So we pull out that probability. We've got 1 6 times just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. And we end up with 21 6 or 3.5. Now if they're all equally likely, the notice that the the expected value is just the average of all of these values because there's six values we sum them all up and divide by six. Now the uh, interesting thing to note about the the expected value that we end up with here 3.5 it's not one of the values that are possible in our sample space so the expected value doesn't have to be one of the values in our sample space so that particular value actually can't occur. But in terms of an average or, or what is the expected value, it's, it's 3.5. Now another way to look at this, you can see that I've, I've drawn where that expected value occurs. And because these are all equally likely, it occur, occurs directly in the middle of all of those. Now I like to think of maybe a, what we call a teeter-totter. You know, if we've got all these things on a teeter-totter, where do we put that fulcrum so that we're balanced? Well in this case because they're all equally spaced and they all have the same value we just put it right in that midpoint exactly in the middle and it's it's balanced. Now let's look at another example find the expected value of the this sample space. The sample space again is still 1 through 6 but in this case the probability of each one of them is just going to be the value in that sample space divided by 21. So the probability of 1 is 121 and as another example probability of 4 is 421's or 421. So the expected value we just again take that the value that's in the sample space times its probability. So we'll start with 1. 1 times 121 plus 2 times 2 over 21 plus and we keep on going finally we get down to the end 6 times 6 over 21. If we sum all those up we'll end up with 91 over 21 and in this case we get 4.3 or 4.3 and the, the 3 continues or repeats. Now looking at the a plot of the values in the sample space and their a line that indicates how what their probability is 1 has a probability of 121, 1 over 21, so I've got a little line here. 2 has a probability of 2 over 21, so it's, a, it's twice as long, or should be twice as long, and so on. So I just keep drawing these lines longer and longer. Now if you think about the way this is, this is arranged, the, there's more weight, you know, if we were talking about a teeter-totter, there's more weight over on this right side than on this left side. And so in order to balance this, we would need to move that fulcrum over to the right some more. 
So as we, if, when they were all equally likely, we were right here at 3.5. And now that we have them more weighted towards 6, we've got to move that, that fulcrum point more towards 6. And so in this case, we end up with it being right at 4.3. Okay, let's look at another example using expected values. Now, this one deals with the game of craps. Uh, I actually have never played the game of craps, but you know you see it on TV all the time. And so, in one part of the game of craps is to bet on eleven. I think I think I looked it up, and I think that's called a yo. I don't know what what that's from, but anyway, betting on eleven. And if you roll an eleven, meaning if you roll the two dice, and the outcome adds to eleven then it pays off 15 to 1, meaning that if you bet a dollar, you would get $15. You would win $15, so they would give you $15. Now, if you lose, you lose a do that dollar. Now, so let's suppose we're going to bet $1. What is your expecting expected winnings, or what is the expected value that you think you're going to get from that bet? Now, the odds means that we either you win a dollar, I'm uh, sorry, we either lose that dollar that we bet or minus one, or we win that fifteen we win fifteen dollars, including the dollar that we bet, so we get fifteen dollars. So we would have um a positive fifteen. So our sample space is either minus one or fifteen. So I I made a mistake on these, but what's the probability of getting a fifteen or what's the probability of getting fifteen dollars? It's the po probability of rolling an eleven. Now, rolling an 11 means that we either have a 5 and a 6 on our roll, or we have a 6 and a 5 on our roll. So the probability of that occurring is, is just 2 over 36. And we've done, done examples like this before. Now, what's the probability of having a minus 1 or getting a minus 1? It's the probability of not rolling an 11. And, of course, the probability of not rolling 11 is 1 minus the probability of rolling 11 and so we can calculate that real easily as 34, 36. Okay, so the expected value that of our winnings will be minus 1 times the probability of getting a minus 1 plus 15 times the probability of getting $15. All right, so you just plug in those values. Minus 1 times its probability, which is 34, 36, and 15 times 2, 36. And if you sum those up, you end up with a negative 0.111, and then the 1, of course, repeats. So we have 0 0.1111, and so on. Well, now, what does that mean? That means that uh, because it's negative, that means on average, if, when you bet a dollar, you will lose 11 cents. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot. You know, it might sound like, oh, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty close to, you know, being even, even odds. Might as well try it and see what you get. But let's suppose you bet a, let's suppose you had a, a million one dollar bills in your pocket and you wanted to keep betting a million times. So if you, or let's, let's suppose you just keep on betting and you bet a million, you bet a dollar a million times. Then at the end of betting a dollar a million times, the expected uh, winnings will actually be a loss of $111,111. So 111, sorry, uh, yeah, $111,111. <laughs> so you can see that, you know, on average, you're going to just keep losing. You just keep losing money. Now, sure, if you bet a million dollars, you could potentially win $15 million. But the chances are, um, overall, the the house or the casino will end up winning more money than than you win. So you always end up losing.